Why are long haul flights so expensive? Well, that's simple, fuel. Planes require lots of it, and it's airline's number one expense. So what if Boeing decided to release an aircraft just to save fuel? And it had saved in 20% less fuel than its predecessor. Well, that's the Boeing 787. In the late 1990s, Boeing had a problem. They had buckets of money, but didn't know where to put that money. They had just finished developing the 777, and they had space to develop a new aircraft. The 767 was starting to look old, so they decided to replace it. But with what? They finalized on two aircraft, the 787 and the Sonic Cruiser. The Sonic Cruiser was an aircraft that had the same efficiency as the 767, but was going to fly just below the speed of sound, making flights shorter. They also had the 787 there. This aircraft was designed to have the maximum fuel efficiency and make low demand routes profitable. For example, for the 787, when traveling between small cities, let's say Birmingham, UK to Ottawa, Canada, you would have to take a flight from Heathrow, then to Toronto, then from Toronto to Ottawa. But with the new 787, airlines could probably offer direct flights from Ottawa to Birmingham. After 9-11 shook confidence in the airline industry, fuel prices spiked because of the war, and demand for a 787 aircraft was booming. So Boeing chose it over the Sonic Cruiser. Now, why would airlines not want to fly direct routes? Well, there are two main reasons. Well, there are two reasons. Twin engines planes were just not designed to fly long haul. So, and until the 80s, twins were not allowed to fly long haul. Essentially, twins were too young. But the most groundbreaking thing about this aircraft is the composite material it's made of. The airplane is over 50% composite by weight, and most of the static elements, like the wing and fuselage, are made of carbon fiber. This is because of carbon fiber's high tensile strength and because of its many leaves. In fact, it's five times the strength of steel and one fifth the weight. But carbon fibers on their own would be way too flexible. But Seth, can you just say that carbon fibers are one of the world's strongest materials? Yeah! Well, then how is it so flexible? Well, carbon fibers are very small. Like, less than half the diameter of a human hair small. The way fibers work is like a fabric. Try and pull it in two, it won't budge. But if you try and push it, it holds up terribly because of its high flex flexibility. The high tensile strength of, the, of carbon fiber is much greater than fabric though. So you must encase these fibers in a plastic to make them hard if you want any semblance of sturdiness. But its flexibility does have uses in the fact that you can easily make organic curves with it and with wings it can flex without getting to the point of plastic deformation and that wing permanently being broken. These flexible wings reduced wingtip vortices, allowing us to remove the sharp lifts or winglets, increase, increasing lift and reducing drag. No rivets means better aerodynamics. And the way carbon fiber is made, you can put massive windows in it before it just can't stand up to the pressurization forces, causing its windows to blow and the cabin depressurization. The only problem is with thunderstorms, because the only reason that your plane does not catch on fire is because of aluminum's great conductivity of electricity. Now carbon fiber is not that conductive, meaning fires can be a practical problem, and so as the electricity might travel to the fuel tank and ignite in the fuel, causing a fire. The way Boeing got around this was by first not using carbon fibers on the leading edges of the wings and flight control surfaces, because that's where lightning strikes are most likely to happen. They also added copper mesh on the wings to provide a low resistance path for the electricity of the lightning strike, insulation fasteners to prevent electricity from traveling to the fuel tank, and compression rings to prevent any fire locations and removing oxygen from the fuel tanks. But some of these measures were removed to save costs, and some people criticized Boeing for this, but the Federal Aviation Administration thought it was okay. They removed the sealant and the copper lining, although with the APC guitar problem, putting this lining is not exactly good for the paint. But Boeing was not the only ones to interview these incredible fuel efficiency games. The engines, designed by General Electric and Rolls Royce, you may know GE has a company that makes them microwaves, bridges, or MRI machines, and Rolls Royce is the company that makes luxury cars, but both do one thing really well, make aircraft engines. 
Now one of the things about the GNX is the engine we're focusing on for now is how its diameter is the size of a 737 fuselage. That is massive. But will a heavy engine just love weight and make weigh the plane down? Well, actually, the larger the intake, the better the fuel economy to a point. You see, aircraft engines are based on the turbofan design. The way a turbofan works is by having a big fan of the inlet of the engine, then you have a compression chamber where that gets compressed, but not all of the air goes in there. In fact, most of the air doesn't. There's a thing called bypass ratio, and the ratio between the air that goes into the compression chamber and the air that does not. The CF6, the predecessor to the GNX, had a bypass ratio of 4.6 to 1, but the GNX has a bypass ratio of 9 to 1. This is a massive ratio, but why don't you just put a ratio of 100 to 1, he asked. Well, first, the engine would be huge, expensive, and heavy, but secondly, possibly more importantly, is that the tips of the fan would be going supersonic, greatly stressing the aircraft's fan and motors. But all of this revolutionary tech must be started somehow. Traditionally, an aircraft would have an auxiliary power unit that's at the back of the aircraft and starts them. It has its own generator along with the twin engines on board. But the 787 has six generators enough to power 1.5 megawatts, or in GPU terms, enough to power two 3020 RTX 3090 Ti's. That is, they were stacked uh, on top of each other would take up over 12,000 DCIE slots, and quite possibly single-handedly melting the Arctic. So why in the world would one plane need this power? Well, it's to power the hydraulic system so that its plane can do little things like deploy land gear, brakes, speed brakes, and blasts. Usually other aircraft would have a bleeder system to do this, but these are inefficient and old. Designing the 787 is not the problem though, manufacturing it is. We have long known about the benefits of carbon composites, but the main problem is these mass producing the 787. The problem is shared with electric car production. It's great if you can manufacture one product, but it's not going to do you too well when you, when you need to mass produce the thing. And Boeing had a lot of problems manufacturing the aircraft. In fact, they had to design it up. But in, in fact, they had to modify an old 747-400 just to, just to transport the fuselage. So how did we get our $33 billion in development off the ground? Well, they must build and assemble the aircraft. But this is where the problems arise with the carbon fiber. First, how do you get the carbon fiber into the correct shape? Well, if you watch this video by British Airways on the 787, you can see that there's a bunch of carbon strands wrapped around the mold, and that mold is put into another to cure it. But they still had other challenges like the 787 showcase on 7-08-07, thanks on Boeing, having a shell of an air of a 787, but no functionality. No working engines, no electronics, fuel systems, and cockpits. These are not working aircraft. This led to production delays later. It ended up with the first few planes having to be disassembled and reassembled with stronger wing boxes. The weight of the aircraft making the first few planes cost billions of dollars and no one wanted to buy them. These planes were nicknamed the Terrible Teens and eventually got sold for a steep discount. With all these problems, the first Dreamliner was delivered six years behind the schedule. All Nippon Airways flew the first commercial flight in late October of 2011. Sales went well and it was even the fastest selling wide body air airliner from launch to rollout. In total, there were six test aircraft, some of which were delivered to ANA. As of 2022, 1,482 787 have been ordered and just over 1,000 have been delivered. Just as things seem to be smoothing out for the two year old aircraft in 2013, Murphy's Law came into play, and not for the first time. Three separate aircraft had battery issues resulting in fires. Two had issues on the ground which were safely extinguished, and one had some issues in the air on its way, on its way from Yamagachi to Tokyo. An emergency landing was made and nobody injured. That same day,
day, most 787s were grounded by their offering companies or governments until Boeing could fix the issue. The APU's batteries were the ones that lit on fire, which was short circuit. The issue was fixed, and Boeing started worrying about the 737 Max. As soon as the first 737 Max was crashed, Boeing had reports emerging about the Boeing Charleston's plant's inferior quality control compared to the old Washington Everett plant. They moved all the way to South Carolina because of the cheaper employees, but they also refused to hire any of the old employees from the Boeing factory because of unionization. So that ended up with them having unskilled employees that were unfit to do their jobs, and that turned out to very badly. So, so on the 737 Max were grounded, even more reports and complaints came from airlines about the quality control of Boeing aircraft. In early 2021, Boeing ground 787 deliveries to a screeching halt. Then, in March of 2021, they resumed delivering aircraft until May, when Boeing decided to further investigate these issues with the type. As of April 2022, Boeing finally sent out instructions to fix the issues and deliveries are slated to resume this summer. Boeing is incredibly lucky to get a, the 787 built, and with the little competition in its size class and making money from airlines ordering it, it was sure Boeing had money on hand for the 737 Max. Thank you for watching this video on the novel episode of Extreme Magic. If you want to watch more, then subscribe and hit the like. And if you didn't notice, I have a new studio. Have a great day, have a great week. I'm Zeph, this is JD Tech, and goodbye.